flag. So I sit there for a few seconds. Um, all right. Let's go on to, to uh, TK Inner. We've given you a lot of a lot of things. Um, you know, we've thrown we've thrown recursion at you. We've thrown some some other stuff. What we haven't talked about is different ways to write programs. And now that we have classes, this TK Inner allows us to do two things. One, it allows us to show you how to do some graphical programming and explain what graphical programming is. And it also shows it also allow us to show you a design pattern that's pretty uh, popular when dealing with, uh, with, with uh, graphical applications like apps, you know, like on your phone and things. So let's, let's kind of walk through this. Um, so we're going to learn about event-driven programming, graf graphical user interfaces, and then we'll use a little bit of TK Inner uh, just to let you develop some GUIs. You guys know all this, right? A graphical user interface is something that's not just text-based, just not typing into the terminal. It's kind of cool in that we can do some, some different things with it. It can run on your phone. You can tap on your phone and hit all sorts of buttons. Um, so it, it's a different way of interacting with the program. Um, we are not, this part of the course is not a substitute for a design course. We can tell you how to do some of these things. Uh, you can discover a lot of how to do some of these things on your own, but developing a good GUI is actually kind of difficult. Um, and there are some horror stories from, from uh, if, you, if you look up bad HTML, You'll see what we mean. There are design components that just don't work together, flashing colors, um, things that are hard for um, colorblind people to see. There's all sorts of things that go into a good GUI, and we have some good GUI development courses here. So I'm going to encourage you, if this is where you want to go, if this is the path you want to go down, uh, to kind of visit those and figure them out. So how do these work? Well, the first thing is... Um, these graphical user interfaces are designed to do something in response to an event, like clicking a button, like, like dragging across your keyboard or expanding or circling or something like that. Um, most of the time, what we're going to be talking about today is essentially uh, push buttons, but you can do a selection from options. You can move your mouse. Um, you know, so these are all events, things that happens. The interface itself is running within a main window. We're generally going to call that root. That's how we'll be referring to it today. Um, that listens for these events to occur and that have um, and that have uh, actions defined when, when the event occurs. Um, we've told you to, to avoid infinite loops. Well, when we're doing GUIs, we actually put it into an infinite loop um, and we need to have a special event to actually kill ourselves. Um, we actually kill our parents. Um, it's kind of a whole Oedipal, you know, matricide, uh, patricide kind of kind of environment. Um, so it's not for the squeamish, but that's what's going on. Um, TK Inner, it's a Python module. It's been around a long time. Uh, TK Inner has actually survived several different languages. It's been incorporated into something called Tickle into Python. There, you can use it from a lot of different places. So it's a fairly well-known, fairly broad um, graphical user interface developer. Um, that's what we're going to show you today. A lot of people will tell you there are better ways. I am certain of that statement. Um, this, however, is something that is available, uh, easily available, very popular, and you can find a lot of stuff on it. Um, the most important distinction here, by the way, let's let's get just get back to this. Um, regular programming is generally serial. Now we can go into when you get into operating systems and other places, you'll figure out how, how to thread your program and make it multi-threaded. These um, graphical programs are inherently multi-threaded, right? When you click an event, you can have multiple events occurring at the same time, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate that with our GUI as we kind of go along. Okay, so enough, enough chat. Let's get started. Here is the absolute simplest program we can create in TK. Um, I'm going to create a new file. We'll just kind of play in here for a bit. Um, right, absolute simplest thing you can find. We import TK Inner. I tell you to never do this. Um, I still don't do this. I still would import this and either rename it 
uh, or, uh, or or use or just actually type you know TK, but it does save you a lot of keystrokes if you import star from TK Inner, and it is kind of the style that's accepted in the general community. So I'm not going to complain if you do it for uh, TK Inner stuff. We generate, we import the module, we create a TK Inner instance, right, and then we send it immediately into uh, essentially an infinite loop. And then this print is just to show you what happens when you go into an infinite loop uh, and don't come out. So if we run this, what this is going to do let's see okay I'm, I'm going to assume that, that that yes is is that you guys can actually see it because um, I'm not able to uh, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to pull this together with uh There we go. Okay, I'm going to have to pull this together with uh, when I in post-production this time. All right, so uh, let's see where we were. So this is the absolute simplest TK inner program. And you can see that despite this print hello, nothing's being printed. That's because this is an infinite loop. Um, but the, the nice thing about TK inner is it actually gives us a little bit of uh, a little bit of help. You know, without anything else, we already have a title. We can minimize or maximize our window. And we have this little cool kill button and you'll notice that as soon as I hit the kill button hello popped up okay and we can run that again and hopefully that'll come up again and you know we can kind of expand it if we want right we can make it bigger um, we can make it smaller and again notice down here there's no hello um, we're in this infinite loop over on the main and if we actually want to get out of our infinite loop, right? This is all hung up right now. If we actually want to get out of our infinite loop, we actually have to kill our window. All right. Um, so that's kind of the TK inner portion. Um, but that's pretty boring. So let's kind of walk down here and, uh, yeah, by the way, this is the way I normally do it. Um, I'm old school. I like to type the module names in. Um, just because it does it does kind of get you uh, out of the habit of assuming you don't have to worry about renaming stuff. Um, you you actually have things. You know what you've imported and you know what you're using. Um, so that's kind of boring. But let's let's start looking at at how we can kind of put things in. Um, we're gonna there's two types of things we're gonna use widgets and containers. Widgets do something. Generally, they're visible. Um, so what we're going to look about most today is we're going to look at buttons. Buttons do something when you click on them. Uh, we're also going to look at canvases, and canvases allow you to do shapes in them. So if you think back to uh, either your uh, lab where you did the plus signs or where we did the triangles, uh, the, the, the recursive triangles, th those drawings were actually in, um, in on canvases, and we were able to do that programmatically. So we could draw a red triangle we could draw a plus. There are a lot of other design elements. We are not going to get into them, but they are available. And someplace in here, I have a link to them uh, that you can use if you, if you want to go out and, and look more uh, into some of the things that are available. Containers, on the other hand, are generally invisible. They may have a border around them or something just to, to set them off. But what they're used, what they do is they allow us to group things together. And then we can arrange these, vis these, these visual groups uh, in the order we want. And that's how we actually control our interface. And that's why you'll see things kind of bounce around sometimes when you're, you know, like when, you're, when you kind of pop things in. Right now we've lost uh, the, uh, the, the left side of our window or the, you know, the left side of our window. Um, and you'll, you'll notice that sometimes as you resize stuff, your buttons pop around or... or, or um, move to different places. Uh, and that's because they're in a container and the containers are ordered in a way that they can be shuffled around and we can try to match ourselves to whatever screen orientation or organization we have. Um, frames are kind of like lists, right? You can put anything you want in them, including other, uh, other containers. 
uh, or buttons or canvases. And a container generally doesn't have a size. Uh, it's kind of like a, a, a trash bag. The more stuff you put into it, um, the more stuff you put into it, the bigger it'll grow. So, you know, we, uh, yeah, so we can put stuff into it. We can make our, make our stuff si of a specific size and the container will grow to, to whatever size it needs to to actually contain what we put into it. Um, so let's look at another example. We started out, we had th these lines and then we essentially had this line, right? We created a window and then uh, we, we put it into an infinite loop, into, into our main loop where we're listening for events. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to start, we're going to put in a frame, a frame as a container. Uh, we'll put that into our root. So we're going to put a, something to hold stuff into our root window. And then well, we'll actually generate three frames, a main frame and then a top frame and a bottom frame. And we're going to tell it that we want the main frame to be on, uh, the top frame to be on top and the bottom frame to be on the bottom. Uh, you'll notice this pack command. We create a frame inside our main frame or inside our root, right? But then before we actually see it, before it becomes part of the interface, we actually have to pack it in uh, to tell it that it's actually uh, available. Once we have our frames organized, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to throw in some buttons. We'll put two buttons in the top frame, one on the left and one on the right. And we'll put two, bu two buttons in the bottom frame, again, one on the left and one on the right. Um, now, we aren't telling the buttons to do anything. So, you know, this isn't going to be useful, but it's going to be prettier. Um, so we can come in here, we can do that. And we should be able to run that. And we should be able to see, come on. There we are. Ah, and now I put it behind. The problem is this is so small that I was having problems grabbing it. So I actually had to expand it and make it bigger before I could... Uh, not that big. Had to expand and make it bigger before I could find any part up here to grab to pull it. And so now we have four buttons. And you can see that the buttons come with, with actions. right? We can click on them and we can see them depress and undepress. Um, but, or we can iconify them. Um, but we're not actually doing anything because we haven't attached any uh, any actions to them. But we get this, we get them packed in. The top buttons are on top, the bottom buttons are in the bottom. Ones are to the uh, left of rights of uh, twos. Um, so that you know again, and all that comes with the ability uh, by clicking on the little X thing to kill it. So we still have all of that that capability. Um, I kind of talked about these. This is the organization of our um, of our GUI, we start off with a root, right? That was this first thing we put in there, this root. In the root, we put a main frame, parent root. We put a top frame and a bottom frame, both with a parent main frame. And then we put in some buttons in the top and bottom frame. And that's kind of the organization. Um, TK Inner has a, has a strict hierarchy. Right? Every widget or container has a parent except for root, which has none. And they're all strictly organized uh, into a tree-like structure. Um, when you create, whenever you create one of these things, right? if you look up here when we're creating a frame, that's the parent, that's the parent, that's the parent, um, that's the parent, that's the parent. There are other options that can go in there, like our labels on the buttons, but the first argument is uh, the parent element. And again, they're used to organize and tell us where things go. And the size is determined by what you put into it. Infinitely stretchable uh, garbage bags. Okay. And, you know, pack is how we tell it where to go and that it's part of the element. Um, okay. So this is getting, this is getting okay. But... This doesn't do anything, and it's already how many lines long? 30 lines long, just about. So we want a better way of organizing things. And so this is kind of the organization that you're going to see 
in most of the apps that you'll look at, certainly any TK Inner app, um, is going to have the organization we're going to look at now. So let me pull this into, and we'll talk about what the organization actually is. Okay, so what we like to do is we like to encapsulate all the functions of your application into a class. So for this one, we have our class MyApp, and when you create an element of class MyApp, what it's going to do is it's going to, um, it's going to take in the root node, right? And then it's going to build the interface elements that we want. So it's going to put in um, a top frame, a main frame, a main frame, a top frame, a bottom frame. So this should do exactly what we did before, um, except we're going to do it in the initializer of the class. So the initializer is going to build our interface, our user interface. And then down in our main, right, here's the guard that, that guards our main. Um, we'll create our root, same as we did before. We will create an instance of our application, right? My app is not anything magic. It's just what we called our class. So we're going to create our instant instantiation of the class, which will build the interface. Uh, and then we'll go into our infinite loop and wait for things to, to end. All right. So this is the exact same thing we did before, except the organization is different. And what we're going to find out is that because it's hard to pass data among um, these TK windows, by encapsulating things in a class, what we end up being able to do is we end up being able to use attributes of the class to pass data as to what button was pressed or what the current state of the application is. Um, and that's going to be very helpful, uh, particularly since all of these things can run in parallel uh, and they need to know what everybody else is doing. So let me uh, run this and, see, and hopefully show you that this is exactly what we had before. Um, Although again, I gotta stretch it before I can actually find a place to grab it. There we go. Okay, so this is exactly what we had before. We still don't have any actions, but we've now built our interface using a class, and you're gonna wanna do this. You want, you're gonna wanna have, you know, this is essentially the complete program right here, and all of the cool stuff is gonna be contained uh, in, this, in this class. All right. Um, let's see. Do we have any questions? No, I think I think Kristen is handling everything right now. Excellent. All right. So let's go on to the next kind of. So so now we're kind of iterating through. We've we've kind of figured out how we want to organize our code. We're we're going to generally use this organization where we have a class that encapsulates the behavior of our application, and then the main the thing that calls it is just a really simple set up the root window, instantiate the application on the root window and then go into our infinite loop. Um, okay, so applications without actions are boring. So what we can do is we can attach a command, we can attach a function that gets executed whenever a button gets pushed. So when we create a button, right, we have a bunch of button creates here, right? When we create a button, we have a, a number of options. The first option is going to be the frame. Um, then we have a bunch of named options like text equals uh, that will t allow us to, to change you know, what it's called, right? Text equals quit, command self-terminate program. This says when the button is pressed, execute this command, and this command is just simply another member of the class, in this case, terminate program, uh, that uh, in this case destroys our parent. Okay, so this is a little bit simpler of a of a example in some instances because there's only one button here. Come on, but in another sense, it's more complicated because it actually has stuff in it. It actually does something, even if it's just kill itself or kill it kill its parent. Um, so again, we come in. Main is exactly the same. What we've changed is the application. This time, we've generated a terminate program. And that terminate program, that terminate button, uh, that terminate program kills our parent, right? So if that's the case, we have to actually 
save our parent. We have to know who our parent is if we're going to kill them. We can't kill a random parent. So when we call our initialization function with the root, we're actually going to save that so we know who it is and we can get back to them. Um, this time we're just going to build a frame. We're going to pack one button into it. Uh, the button is going to be called quit. And when you press it, it's going to kill its parent. Um, this configure allows us to do some other things like um, we're, we're, we're saying how big the button should be. We're allowing space on the top and the bottom. So these are just different commands. You can change the color. You can change, you know, the, the, the um, border, different, different options on these commands. We can run this. Um, hopefully this... Huh, where is that? There it is. Ah, I'm still running the old one. Okay, now we can run this. Right, and pull that in there. Here's our little application with the quit button. Um, it's got a little border around it. Uh, if we press the quit button, we kill ourselves. Um, it's a painless death. It's not, you know, it's not torturing ourselves. We're just dying. Um, okay, so now we're starting to build up this. We, we know we can configure buttons. We can configure uh, widgets with their actions to actually do something. Um, we can make them look good. We can pack them in and we can attach them to programs that actually do something. These programs have access to the self pointer, right? Which is how we access all of the attributes in our class. So now we can start building things, you know, even more complicated where we actually have data sticking around. Um, so, So I'll look at a couple more things, um, and we'll get into this in just a, in just a second. Yeah, there's our final program. Um, we'll talk about a few more things. The first thing is the Canvas widget, and from running the uh, I should actually name these things, and I'd be able to do it right. We know that we're, we're we created a Canvas. In this, in this more complicated example, we created a canvas, and then we drew a polygon on it. Um, we draw a triangle on it, essentially, but it could be any polygon. Um, right, and that was just this little kind of draw area. Still don't know why that wouldn't pick up. Right, but we could, we could come in here and we could draw this. Um, so now let's just look at what that means. Well, canvas is something you can draw in. We're already familiar with that. Um, there's all sorts of calls we use to create uh, uh, create polygon, uh, but there's also a create oval call. I think if you look at your lab, you're doing a draw line call or a uh, create line call. I don't remember exactly the format of that. Um, but Canvas is just something you can draw, and it comes with some draw primitives. Um, this takes a, a four tuple to do the upper right and lower left corners or something like that. Um, and like image objects, zero, zero is the top left corner. When you draw, things get buffered, right? Just like, uh, just like we do with other input and output, right? We've talked about that, uh, the ability, the, the need to put flush equals true when you're trying to debug, to force uh, Python to put out what you actually uh, were ready to, you know, what you'd actually thought you'd printed out. Well, Canvas update allows you to force the Canvas to update. Um, and... There's also another really useful call, particularly if you're trying to do something visual, that says wait a little bit. So don't, you know, do do the draw. If particularly if you're in a loop trying to draw something, let's let's wait a little bit so that our eyes can catch up um, to to what you're actually drawing. This just adds a little bit of delay to the program. Um, I can help on that. Okay. Um, I'm trying. I was just trying to figure out how if that. I think that's in seconds. 
it's not clear. Uh, anyway, you can we can get that from. Uh, I got a nice link in here for finding out about uh, TK Inner Canvas. So if you click on that, it'll take you and it'll tell you what the wait time is in. I think it's in seconds, but I'm not sure. It could be milliseconds. Um, okay. So with that in mind, let's take a look at this at this application. And we'll walk through this in the remaining five or ten minutes. Um, I'm pretty sure that this isn't a, uh, a virus. So I am... Oops. I didn't want to kill my triangles. I wanted to do a new one. So I'm going to, you know, if I were worried, I would look through this and make sure nothing bad was going to happen. Uh, but I'm not all that worried, so I'm just going to run it. And this brings up a blank canvas. has a little notation here that says number of circles equal two. We can knock that down to one. We can increase that up to 256. Um, I'll do 32. And when we draw, what it's going to do is it's going to draw 32 concentric circles uh, relatively evenly spaced as to whatever the, the, the pixel resolution we can draw. Um, I told you before that things operate in parallel. So now I've hit the increase button a lot. It's going to draw 256 of these. We'll clear this and we'll start drawing. And it's going to draw 256 of those. But events happen in parallel. So I can hit clear as many times as I want during that draw. I can reduce. Of course, that doesn't seem to have an effect. Um, oh, I know why. Um, let's see if we start. One is not enough. Let's do... We start doing that, we increase it. That eh, doesn't do it either. There, we can. Right, all these things can happen in parallel, at least. Right now, you can see we, we went off, we got interrupted, we drew things at a different. Um, this is going faster than it normally does, so I'm having problems hitting things before. It's good to start off when we're trying to do these to start off with uh, small things so you can see them, but I'm, I'm not able to kind of hit these in time. Okay. So anyway, um, so that's what this does. Let's kind of see how this is organized. You don't have to be intimately familiar with this. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here, um, but it is good if you kind of understand kind of what's going on in this. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Here's our initialization function. This sets up the entire canvas, right? That goes all the way down to here. That's by far the biggest thing we have in this um, in this app, in this uh, application. Um, they've actually defined a local function. They defined a function inside a function uh, that's used for setting up new buttons because they have a lot of they want essentially the same thing to happen for every button based on on, uh, on these four parameters. They go through, they set up some constants, they create a canvas, they set a wait time. So that's not in seconds, it must be uh, milliseconds or hundredths of a second or something. Um, they start off a repetition, a repetition to be two. Um, they were passed in a parent, right? They create the main parent, the main frame, put their parent, you know, save their parent up there, create a main frame, and then they start packing things in. They have a draw frame, they put a canvas in it, configure the canvas, um, pack it in, 
they put a button frame, right? So this is the canvas. This is the button frame. They pack that in underneath the canvas. Um, and then somewhere in here, oh, this inf info, uh, they put a little information window. That's where this circles equal 32 thing is being printed. It just creates a little text thing inside the canvas where they can put out data. Once you do that, it's pretty easy, right? You have a clear button, right? The clear button calls self.clear, which has clear labeled on it. And all it does is delete everything off of the main canvas. The reduced, right, that reduces the number of circles. So every time we hit the reduce button, we call the reduce function to reduce the number of circles. Let me kind of move this over there. We don't actually need to see that. Um, you know, increase, you know, pretty much the same. Uh, allows us to go up to 256. Put info, that interacts with this canvas info area to change the information there. So when you increase or, decre or decrease the number of circles, increase and reduce calls put info to change that text field to be whatever it currently is supposed to be. Okay, and then we have, of course, quit, which commits patricide or matricide. And, and then we have the draw. And all the draw is going to do is it just kind of looks in the canvas, finds out how big the canvas is, and then just starts drawing that many uh, repetitions, whatever, you, whatever your repetition rate is set to, draws that many concentric uh, circles onto the canvas. So again, this is, you know, you've seen this with the draw, with uh, the, the draw um, pluses in your lab and the draw triangles in your, um, in our other examples. All right, let's see what else we have in this thing. Um, anyway, you don't have to be able to write this from scratch right now, but you should, be, given one of these, you should be able to figure out what it does. Um, and uh, I think that's pretty much what we want to say about graphical user interfaces. So um, there's, some, there's apparently some questions about check one in lab. Uh, so uh, first off, uh, the class is done. You guys are, are welcome to, uh, to kind of bounce out here if you want. Um, have a nice day. I am going to throw up my please wait sign for the next section. Three, two, one. Okay, um, so...